Hey guys, and welcome to the board. We are playing the Space Cats Peace Turtles pre-made tournament map along with their drafting rules. This is my first Prophecy of Kings game and I've intentionally not looked at the factions much just so I can kind of have a fresh experience, I suppose. So when it comes to banning, I'm just gonna go with Jolnar because I don't like how their promissory note changes the game and allows them to sell the tech. I, th I think it's a little too much. All right, so I have a choice between putting the ghosts in the game, the space kitties in the game, or a race that sounds like they could just genetically engineer themselves to be better than either one of those. Is there actually a choice here? Also, I imagine everyone wants to try the new races. And then we get the Titans nominated and moved into the pool, which all I know of them is that they build a lot of PDSs. Then the ghosts get pulled over along with the kitty cats. Now we go through and either select a slice of the pie or a faction that we'd like to play as. Yellow selects the best slice. Well, I'd prefer a green script, but you can't have everything. Red selects the Titan boys. White grabs a slice and that isn't the most resource intense slice, but it has a legendary planet. I can't remember which one that is. I think it's the mech one. I think one gives you mechs, another gives you infantry, and another gives you two fighters. With at least one other person picking a faction, that means I'm not going to get the worst slice. Plus, white picked up one of the slices that I personally wouldn't have picked. So I feel pretty safe grabbing the almighty gene sorcerers. Uh, let's, let's see. I have no idea what their actual abilities are. I imagine they somehow genetically engineer things. Kitty cats get picked up. So that means there's gonna be some hustling at the table and then blue picks the white slice. That's not confusing at all. Also not a great slice in terms of resources, but it has a legendary planet. I think that's the one that produces two infantry. Now I'm cheating. I have the factions pulled up beside me so I can figure out what symbols are what. That is the Imperium that's being selected by Blue, which is another one of the new factions. Green picks up the 5-8 green-yellow skip. And I'm going to jump at the chance to grab the Blue Slice. 8-9 is almost the highest number of resources on the, the board in terms of Slice. Plus the Blue and Red skip can be really useful in times. Probably not the best skip. Obviously Green's the best. White grabbing Ghost of Creus and Red just picking up the final piece of the pie. Oh no, Yellow grabs the Birdie Boys. I saw a preview of them. I really wanted to play them. That Capacity 1 Destroyer. Oh my gosh, when you combine it with the Mechs. Oh man, I think that's a game changer. Birdie Boys. Oh, I want to play them so bad. Someone play the Birdie Boys with me. All right, we switched up our seats to our corresponding slice. We're doing a little unpack and let's start off by taking a look at our te starting technologies. I really like this end of round ability to just redistribute your command tokens, especially round one. You can move things from fleet to do secondaries. I, you might as well just ignore the agenda phase ability. I'm never going to get that right. So let's not be under any false pretenses. Wow, my gut reaction with Biosims is that this is just a broken technology. In this game, I have two tech speciality planets, which turn one, I can at least move into one and ready it. But think of all the ways that you can add tech specialities to planets. And I know with the expansion, you can increase the value of planets. That's not even including the ability to ready another card, which I'm sure there's a faction ability out there where readying it and using it twice per round is amazingly good. Before we choose which one of these to take, I should probably know if I'm gonna be creating a bunch of dreadnoughts. So let me take a look at the faction here. What? No, they're gene sorcerers. They're not war. Oh, I am the worst player with factions that require to fight. And the gene sorcerers here apparently just wanna run around the galaxy collecting fleet tokens from other players like they're little Pokemons. All right, forget all that. What we're going to do is we're going to use our tech skip to go cruiser, then we're going to get some mechs, and then we're going to take some territory, and we're going to use the fact that everyone thinks we're really good at fighting to make sure that they don't fight us, and we'll trick them. With the mobility of cruisers too, I think you can get the adjacent to another player's home system no problem. I'm not going to be able to have two systems that have a legendary planet, mechatol, or an anomaly, so that's not going to happen round one. 
Spinning eight influence. Uh, I guess my starting planet has five. So with bio stems, maybe. But if I get that objective round one, that would just kill my early game. I so no, no. The Imperium pick up warfare, and all I really care about is money round one because with that tech that I have, I can redistribute my tokens away from my fleet. Plus, I can combine that with my commander to do all the secondaries that I want. So, yeah, just show me the money. Casper picks up technology, and sorry about opening so many windows here. I'm thinking about going green and red, which is something you would never do before Prophecy of Kings. But between Psychoarchology and AI development letting me skip so many techs or using my tech skips without using the planets, I think it's going to work out really well for me to go into Cruisers, then War Suns. Although this is unconventional, I think this is going to be a new meta going into Prophecy of Kings. Titans pick up leadership, Space Kitty Cats, they end up getting politics, and finally the good old birdie boys get construction. One of the big reasons that I want to get mechs early is because I have two hazardous plants within striking distance round one. And I know that most of those cards say something like if you have a mech, you get this thing for free. But if you have an infantry, you have to destroy your infantry. And destroying infantry really early in the game is bad because it really slows down your expansion. And I also just realized that Titans moved a Dreadnought and Cruiser into that planet they're ending up on. And they're the faction that has the cruisers that automatically get capacity one. Wow. I Someone played a game with me for Titans 2. We got to get birdie boys in and we got to get the Titans guys in. Oh, they do end up drawing two cards, which would make them lose an infantry. One of which would have unexhausted the planet and it's really good. But they pass up on both because they don't want to lose the ground forces. Hakan moves out and takes one of their neighboring home systems using a carrier and two ground forces. He draws a Dyson Sphere, which adds two resources to the planet and one influence. And this is why I think Biostems may be like a mistake to add into this game, because if you get a three resource producing planet, you have a tech speciality on it, you add in Dyson Sphere, that's five resources. And I think there's other attachments you can add to a planet Although you may be able to only add one, that's a conservatively five resource planet that you can use twice per round. That's a huge increase in kind of power level of the game. He also draws a cultural relic, which is a mistake. The other planet there is a hazardous planet, I believe. But a boy is on the move, taking flight taking a system next to their home system, using a carrier, bringing along some troops. And they get two industrial planets, one of which gives them abandoned warehouses for two commodities. They don't have any neighbors to trade with. So this is a bit of a problem with me because I was hoping to get something out of them in terms of debt when I pop trade. <sighs> Unfortunate. They also get a cybernetic research facility, which adds a yellow tech skip to their tableau of tech skips. My starting planet has an amazing five influence, but it only has three resources, which means I can't follow either technology or warfare. So if I don't use trade now, there's a chance that one of those gets played and I can't follow it up. Hakan agrees to exchange my commodities for his. So that will put me at six trade goods. And then from around the table, I get a promise of paying me one for a free refresh. The birdie boys don't take me up on that, which makes sense because they have two commodities already. So it's a little bit of an opportunity loss there. This also serves as a good stall for technology and warfare to be played. Apparently the Empyrean are some kind of space vampires. I don't know. Someone in the game told me that. Blame them if I'm wrong. Anyhow, they move with a destroyer to explore this space, picking up two action cards one command counter for two action cards. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good exchange. That's basically the secondary of politics. Oh, Casper, with your silly wormhole shenanigans going straight for Malice. They do find the Tomb of Infidia, which provides a one influence, rounding this planet out to three influence, which is nice when you combine that with the leadership secondary. The only downfall is that if someone finds the crown, that could be a little problematic for Casper. Oh man, Titans with those one capacity cruisers just zoomed right up to Mechatol Rex. 
getting a zero two planet and picking up Paradise World, which makes it a zero four planet. Although it does put you in the position of deciding between the four influence and the green tech skip. Hakan's in the unfortunate position where there's this great system next door with three planets on it. Unfortunately, he doesn't have enough infantry to take them all. So he's building in his home system with four infantry, which allows him to take all of them. Unfortunately, it locks the home system and means he can't move out this round. This presents an excellent opportunity for me because it just so happens my agent can unlock his home system and let him get moving around. And he has lots of money. Pretty boys activating Vega Major and Minor. They find a cultural relic fragment and they also find freelancers, which allows them to immediately purchase a ship in that system. They can also use influence in order to buy that. They take advantage of it by building a cruiser. I move my starting carrier into Lysis and Velnor with two ground forces, one going on each planet. As I explore the first planet, I pick up an industrial relic fragment, which potentially could be good if I can get two more. For the other planet, I get functioning base, which is kind of nifty. You can get, get a commodity, which is okay. Or I can spend a trade good slash commodity to draw an action card. And that is a great trade off in my mind. I end up picking up the action card to, if one of my systems is attacked, I can immediately move two ground forces to that system being attacked. That's fantastic considering mechs are labeled as ground forces in this game. The Imperium activate Prime more and they even get lucky with a demilitarization zone. And I really like this card because sure, you don't have to worry about defending the system. You also can trade it during the agenda phase if maybe that's super useful for you. But the real big positive here is that you don't have to leave a trail of infantry behind in the early game as you're expanding out. Yes, give me those cruiser twos. Move three, capacity one. I'm gonna move mechs everywhere. I have to spend a red tech skip in order to pull this off along with my home planet and one trade good. Unfortunately, that leaves me with four trade goods and going into warfare secondary, I would really prefer to have six. I also see that on the camera here, I haven't spent my token yet and I haven't spent bio stems. I do remember to do both of those. I just haven't gotten a chance to do it yet. Iron Man activates leadership and I don't think anyone follows up leadership. Does anyone ever follow up leadership round one? Aha, this is my shot. Hakan activates politics and I want to do the secondary of this anyhow. But more importantly, Hakan really needs his home system unlocked to take the three planets next door, and it's worth a lot to him. He quickly offers up Speaker, but he's really eager about it. So I'm like, well, maybe I can get more from him. And the final deal ends up being he gives me Speaker and two trade goods in exchange for me unlocking his home system. And four trade goods in order for him to pick up three planets isn't too bad of a deal, but this is just such a fantastic benefit to me as well. For my action cards, I end up getting In the Silence of Space, which lets you move through enemy ships for one movement. And this is one of those cards that can win you games. Crippling Defense is really just an action stall. If you use this against a player, especially early on, you're just going to poke a beehive. Pretty Boys activate their home system and they eventually build there. I believe they pick up a destroyer and a couple ground forces. I'm trying to stall out for Warfare to be played, so Crippling Defense is a perfect use case for that, and in order not to poke a beehive, I'm just going to choose a place that doesn't have a PDS on it, just so I'm friendly with everyone. I am very careful not to let anyone know that I want Warfare to be played, because I think other people are in the same position, and I'm hoping other people will actually pay him to do it. The Ghost Player asks for Warfare to be played as well. I... I think they pay them a trade good or something in order to get it popped. Anyhow, Warfare gets played either way, which works out for me, and I build my cruiser along with my two mechs. Ghost move a Dreadnought and Destroyer along with a ground force into Hope's End, and I should probably be specific, this is an infantry ground force, so it's a little risky going to a hazardous planet with one of those. This is also probably, in my opinion, the best of the legendary planets because it gets you either a mech which has a component limit of four, 
So if you do already have four of those, you can start getting action cards. He gets lucky with Warfare Research Facility, which adds a red tech skip to this planet, and no infantry sacrifice has to be made. The Titans move into the system of Arnor and Lor with a carrier and two ground forces, finding an abandoned warehouse, which gets you two commodities, along with a propulsion research facility, which gets you a free tech skip for blue. Well, I guess it's not free. It just acts like a regular tech skip. Hakan, I believe, forgets that he has his home system unlocked and doesn't move out into those three worlds, which is really unfortunate. Buddy Boys does construction, and they end up putting a space dock in the planets that are a little bit closer to Mechatol Rex, which just adds such utility to them. I think this gets followed up only by Titans putting down a PDS in their home world. I go ahead and move a Dreadnought and Cruiser into Zobot and Melon, and I make sure to do this before taking the world next to Mechatol Rex because I think that may throw off some alarms. I end up not needing the mech on Zobot. I just get a red relic fragment and then I follow it up with a blue relic fragment on Melon, making me one of the lucky people with one in each color. The Empyreans activating Aranam and Mir with one carrier and two infantry, one on each, and then using the special ability of Primer to get two additional ground forces on Mir. They also pick up a green and red fragment as well. Ghosts take Lazar and Sakulog. They get a green cultural fragment as well as Mining World on Sakulog, which brings it up to a total of four resources when tapped. Argent Flight and Titans go ahead and pass here. I move into Arcan Vale, which is a beautiful three influence planet along with a blue skip. I also get lucky and grab a free command token. I don't particularly need it this round, but you can't complain about a free command token. The Imperium take Atlas, which puts them adjacent to me, and they pay off their debt of one trade good. Thank you. That leaves just Titan owing me one trade good. The force they move there isn't particularly strong. It's just a cruiser, two fighters, two ground troops. It does put them adjacent to Ghost through the Bee Wormhole and Malice. They exchange alliances, and you might be a little worried that your neighbors are allying up against you, but I don't think it's necessarily against me per se, because I have a pretty good amount of plastic on the board. It's not great, but it's a decent amount that attacking me would be kind of a, a pain. So I'm not too worried. On the planet of Atlas, they also find a second hazardous relic. Sadly, I'm not gonna be able to get any objectives round one, which is unfortunate because sometimes it's hard to play catch up on those objectives. And with Make History being on the board, the only real planets I can see to get that with are Megatol Rex, the Asteroid Belt, but I'm not really looking to go anti-mass deflectors, or at least there's a lot of other attacks that I would rather have. There's the Legendary Planets, but that's really going to anger some of my neighbors, so I don't want to do that. Leaving Evera, the Nebula Belt between me and Empyrean. Now, here's a good opportunity for me to get this objective because I have speaker, so I can go first and take Mechatol Rex. No one can really contest that as far as I know. I also have the third relic that the Empyreans need. So all I ask for in exchange is I'll give you that relic as long as I can have the system in the nebula between us and Mechatol Rex without you attacking me. Now, that is a nice three-resource planet, but he does end up getting the Scepter of Immopar. You guys can let me know in the comments how bad I, I messed that up. But that lets you get a free secondary each round of the strategy cards, effectively giving it him three influence. So I think it's kind of a, a good deal because he just doesn't have to do anything, and he got a free secondary each round for the rest of the game. With the Empyrean spending their last action on getting the Relic, Ghost and myself pass, bringing it back to the Empyrean again to finish it out by building their home system. They get one cruiser and two infantry. Ghost is the only one to score round one with Make History due to Malice and Hope's End. Next up is Engineer a Marvel, and I intended to go Warsun anyhow, so this plays in well to that. 
I'm not going to rush this objective too much though, because once I get a war sign on the board, if I park that in a safer location, it's probably not going to be something that I can lose. However, something like obtaining Mechatol and an anomaly system is a bit more tenuous. For my action card, I get refit troops, which is a fantastic action card. You get to replace two of your ground infantry with two mechs, and that's a serious upgrade. You go from hitting on 8 plus to 6 plus and a unit that has sustained damage, not to mention the special ability, and this functions as an action so it can be used as a stall. Oh, perfect action card. I was really curious as to why Hakan was so eager to give someone else speaker, and this explains it. He gets political stability, which lets him hold on to the action card that he has, in this case, politics. So speaker would be worthless to him because he's not even going to select a strategy card. I generally find that taking Mechatol Rex gets too much attention towards me than I would like, but refit troops would let me get two more mechs. Combine that with a PDS on Mechatol Rex and decoy operations to just move those mechs in. This will also fit into my faction because if I win a combat, I take one of their tokens and put it in my fleet supply. And then subsequently, I can use the mech's ability to just nope an action in Mechatol Rex. What I don't like about this is something that I um, have on the to-do list to make a video for, and that is, in part, leadership. I don't like picking it. It's the worst strategy card that you can choose from. But in this case, I'm forced to, because if I don't, someone else is going to choose leadership and certainly grab the one point from Mechatol for me. <laughs> you can see me checking my uh, mech ability to make sure I understand what it does. Ghost picks up construction. Titans, they grab technology. Obviously, Hakan gets politics. The birdie boys, they pick up trade, which is nice. Imperium, they pick up Imperial, which I I can't tell if it's paranoia of them trying to take Megatol Rex from me or if they are just in a position to score two objectives and they're just trying to play catch up, which is smart. Looking around at my neighbors as I take Mechatol, they really only have like two infantry in the adjacent systems. So I think by plopping down one mech on Mechatol and then one mech on the adjacent system, both of those are pretty well defended. I would personally put my money on the mech winning in a two infantry versus one mech combat. At the same time, I don't think seeing one cruiser and one mech on Mechatol Rex is going to make the board go, Oh my gosh, he's going to grab Imperial and he's going to win in like two rounds and everyone needs to go kill him, <laughs> which I see happen so often with Mechatol and why I don't like to take it. For the six influence, I spend Melon and Arkan Vol, mainly because Arkan Vol is just the most exposed planet, I think. And then I just round it out with a trade good for the sixth. I untap Arkan Vol to reuse that three influence later on using Biostems. And Hakan moves in to take those three planets he was eyeballing last round with a carrier and some ground infantry. He gets pretty lucky and gets two red relics, which just means he needs one more in order to make an artifact. He also picks up a green tech skip, and it's worth noting that that green tech skip is not on the planet that already has a green tech skip, so he sincerely does have two different green tech skips. Ghost moving into Kwasanen, and he's roaring to go. Huh? Huh? Yeah? Huh? I'm sorry. I'll see myself out. Um, he ends up picking up a blue cultural fragment along with a banded warehouse. And I do have one green and one blue along with his need for another green. So we exchange my green relic for his blue relic. Pretty boys moving in to take Ong. They get functioning base, which unfortunately, I don't think they actually have the commodity or trade good to spend here. I'm not 100% sure. Either way, I do know for certain that they grab a commodity. Titans moving into a black hole with a planet in it, Corboon. And they go in there with a dreadnought, which is worth noting because when they come back out, they're going to risk that dreadnought going Boom. I remind them that they do still owe me one from the round one trade, and they go ahead and pay that up. They also have an opportunity here to use Expedition, 
in order to immediately ready this planet. But since they don't have a mech there, they would have to destroy the ground force, and they ultimately elect not to do that. On Imperium's turn, they sell their green relic over to Ghost for two commodities, two trade goods, and a ceasefire, giving Ghost the three relics that they need. Imperium themselves just move into the blank space next to me. I'm not too worried about it. And a wormhole appears there through Gamma Relay, which is interesting. It looks like this is connected to Malice which I, I don't like a wormhole being right next to my home system, especially when I have no ground forces there and two fighters. I'm not sure if Empyrean and the Ghost player see this or not, but Ghost can move anywhere that he has a wormhole into that gamma wormhole, or it looks like, like a Y to me, but whatever, and then into my home system through Empyrean because their faction ability allows them to allow other players through their spaces. And then they could take my wormhole. There's really only two fighters there. And I'm only really relying on decoy operations in order to prevent that from occurring, which would move two mechs back into my home system. Let me go ahead and use refit troops to replace two of my ground infantry with two mechs, getting my four mechs out on the board and that'll give me two mechs to pull from in case that happens. This is also going to work as a stall because the longer I can stall out leadership, the more likely I am to be able to get someone to pay me for it. And as I look around the board, with the exception of like Titans, everyone's kind of running out of tokens and I have the ability to redistribute my tokens at some point in time throughout the round. Oh, a con. Activating their home system, throwing out a ton of trade goods in order to build their flagship along with a destroyer to boot. This is the scariest construction play I've ever seen. A PDS goes on Hope's In, a PDS goes on Malice. As soon as Ghost gets PDS 2, that means he can pretty much shoot those PDSs anywhere in the galaxy that he wants. Combine that with a flagship that I'm sure he'll get eventually, and that flagship is just a mobile wormhole, which is going to be backed by a crazy number of PDS shots. Empyrean also throws down a shipyard next to Mechatol Rex, which in and of itself isn't intimidating, but it doesn't imply that he's going to create a fleet there, and there's a most likely direction that he goes, and it's towards me. And that isn't even the worst part. The worst part is that if I throw down a backup space dock on Lysis or Veldor, that's going to lock that system, which prevents me from moving those two mechs to reinforce my home system if I lose it. And also it means I can't put a space dock there in case I lose my only space dock. Um, also, if I don't put a PDS on Mechatol Rex, it means I can't play decoy operations. I'm going to take a risk and say... Put a PDS on Mechatol Rex and hope that I don't lose my home system or that decoy operations can save me if Ghost attacks me. The Empyrean player gives Birdie Boys Dark Pack, which says, if you give me all of your commodities, we both get a trade good in exchange. And he goes ahead and plays that as his action for the round. All right, so tech gets popped. And Ghost grab PDS2, which makes me pretty frightened. I am kind of debating whether Neural Motivators is going to be a tech that I can afford to get while also getting War Sun. I think if I go Neural Motivators into Psychoarchology and AI development, I will be fine. It's unfortunate that I can't get Hypermetabolism along the way because that's a crazy good tech. But I just... I think by the time I get it, it may cost me the ability to get War Suns, and I will already be three rounds into the game, which means I'm really only going to get two, maybe three tokens from it. So I don't think it'd be worth it. The Empyrean activate a black hole or gravity rift, whatever, and explore it. In the process, they find Lost Crew, which gives them two action cards. I'm going to continue pushing my luck that Ghost isn't going to take my home system and move a carrier into Evera along with one of my mechs. I really have no intention of ever seeing this carrier come out of this nebula, but we'll see what happens. 
as I move in and draw my exploration card, I end up finding mercenary outfit. Who doesn't like free ground infantry day? I think the Hakan player just stalls here by activating Kaldry and Zonhot. Good enough. Also, the Creus IFF, which just allows Hakan to create a wormhole on a system that they own or that's blank, is exchanged, or I should say given to Hakan. Ghost spends all of his green relics in order to get an artifact, and he gets the Prophet's Tears, which is yet another way to skip technology, or if you can't skip technology, you can use it as a way of getting action cards. I also redistributed my command counters at the end of my last round, but I forgot to exhaust the card here, so I flippity flipped that over. Buddy boys are about to pop trade, and they also have a blue relic that I'm looking for. So in exchange for my trade agreement, they give me the blue relic, and it works out really well for them because they can immediately just pop trade and I get my trade agreement back. And I think three trade goods for a relic seems acceptable. I don't know. What do you guys think? The other players do the normal, if you replenish my commodities, I will either owe you one or immediately pay you one trade good. When you combine this anomaly with the one they currently have in the gravity rift, this will give them the two anomalies they need for the objective of make history. So Imperial gets played and I, I don't really like doing any of the secret objectives early on because it moves you up in points. And then when people see that you've moved up in points, they go, oh no, we got to stop this guy from winning. Um, I do end up drawing into an unfortunate card though. I get season icon, which is take a legendary planet. And one of them has demilitarization zone on it. So I'd have to convince Imperian to give it to me. And the other two would put me at war with ghost who can currently take my home system and cripple me pretty bad. So probably a good idea not to poke him for threatened enemies, get a ship next to another player's home system. I get that. Just drop something into the demilitarization zone or somewhere around Ghost, and I don't think they would mind that too much. I'm still trying to stall out leadership, and I keep seeing all these awesome artifacts get taken, so I'm going to go ahead and spend my three to see what I get. And I get Crown of Thanos, which is definitely not a cultural reference. <sighs> I'm really disappointed in this. I, I've already got a really combat oriented faction and it's just not my play style and this kind of just adds insult to injury on the bright side politics gets popped and i use my agent to secondary it without paying anything and then i try to convince Hakan to pay me something in order to remove a token that he would want me to remove but he doesn't take me up in the offer so i try to pick the one that seems least ideal for him Taking a look at my action cards, I get Shields Holding, which cancels two hits during space combat, and then Maneuvering Jets to cancel one hit during PDS fire. Really not thrilled with these, but so far I've been getting really good action cards. I was kind of overdue. Ghost plays Tactical Bombardment. He doesn't actually destroy anything. He's just using it as his action for the round, so he doesn't pass yet. It's a stall, basically. Pretty boys. Activating Arkhorn and Joel Ear, Ur, Joel Ur, something like that, to build using the space dock that they got round one. They're going to end up putting out a destroyer along with four infantry. I'm kind of curious how he's doing this. Scanlink Network apparently lets you explore something that has already been explored, which runs me off into the side tangent of why biostems probably shouldn't exist because. In theory, you could get something like a biz, which then gets a tech spec on it. So you could then use a three resource planet twice per round. Combine that with some of the attachments that improve things. You could end up with a five or six resource planet that you're using twice per round. Anyhow, Titans activate Vorhal. I believe is how you pronounce that. And they move a carrier in along with a couple of troops. They also explore it again, ended up with mercenary outfits and get a, an extra ground force. I should probably specify infantry because technically mechs are also ground forces. Ghost offers up their trade agreement in exchange for blood pack, which I don't know why the Imperium wouldn't take that deal. 
It's actually really cool that they have two promissory notes like this, which the general theme is you, you lose them if you attack me. So pro for Empyrean. But it's also if you do things that help both of us, you get a bonus for it. In this case, you get four extra votes if you vote the same way as the Empyrean. As a courtesy, they activate their home system with the intention of building, but they go ahead and pass their turn just to keep the game moving along. They'll eventually build a flagship there. My stall tactics for leadership pay off. The Titans offer up Terraform, which realistically, there's only going to be three or four turns left. So this is really only three or four resources. It's kind of cool that you get one of each symbol and that may come up in the objectives, but I mostly like it because I just like the idea of building up cool planets. Between Ark and Vol and my home planet of Ix, that almost gets me three tokens in and of itself. I just toss in one extra trade good to round it out, combine it with the three from leadership, and I end up with six tokens. For the remainder of the round, everyone either built in their home system or passed, so I'm going to do a quick recap of that because it got a little chaotic. The Imperium player add four fighters to their earlier build of the flagship. The Ghost player gets their flagship, a destroyer, along with four ground forces. And for the Titans, they pick up a red relic when they go to activate their home system. They also get their flagship, two fighters, and then two infantry. Oh, and I almost forgot myself. I got a cruiser along with four ground forces. I did have to end up spending a trade good in the process, but having four ground forces on the planet, I think are, is enough to keep Ghost away. They don't really have anything that can bombard. So I'm feeling a lot more comfortable now about my home system being lost to them. I'm gonna end up scoring Make History, which is hoarding Mechatel Rex and then having a place with an anomaly. That puts me up to two points, thanks to the one that I got from taking Mechatel Rex. Overall, not a bad position so far. I do feel like I could have gotten one of my secret objectives, which is have a, an area next to another player's home system, but that would put me on three and make me look a little more threatening than I would like to look. Taking a look at what the other players score, for spending eight influence, that is scored by the Birdie Boys and Empyrean. The having two planets of Anomalies, Megatol Rex, or Legendary, that's scored by a lot of people. Ghost had it from last round. I score it this round. The Empyrean also score it through Imperial. And Titans score it as well. For having your flagship or War Sun, Ghost and Hakan picked that up this round. For the next objective of push boundaries is control more planets than two of each of your neighbors. While holding Mechatol does make me really nervous, it does make me neighbors with everyone. So it's kind of nice for this objective. And looking around the table, I currently have more planets than three of my neighbors. So as long as I don't lose ground, I should be fine. I don't like insubordination. It's really just a stall, but in doing so you anger someone. Play your eyes is a fantastic card, however. Spending five influence, which I have an abundance of, in order to just grab one of your neighbor's tech. And most importantly, you don't have to meet the prerequisites. I do have to do something with these action cards this round. I have six out of seven that I can hold in my hand. Hmm. Anyhow, I allocate my command tokens, and I really like how much pressure it takes it off when you have the ability to reallocate them mid-round. You just can kind of put these wherever. For the agenda phase, we get search warrant, which would let me draw two secret objectives, and I'd have to discard one of them because I'd be at my limit. I really don't want this though, because I would have to play with my secret objectives face up. And the last round of this game typically is who can win? How do we stop them? And then the person who wins is the one that no one else really sees a clear path to victory for. Titans get to look at the top card of the agenda deck so they can know what the next agenda is and it can affect how they're going to vote in this agenda. Hack Elections gets played by Hakan, which reverses the voting order, and he does tell us that he wants this. So this helps him out because he becomes second to last to vote and he gets to see what everyone else does first. The birds, they end up getting one free vote for each player at the table as long as they spend at least one vote towards the person. So they put seven votes in total towards Hakan, and the ghost player also pays 11 votes for Hakan. And I'm not really sure what they got in return, but I'm pretty sure they got something. 
and I'm not gonna try to fight that. And then the rest of the table just kind of follows suit by passing. Taking a look at the secret objectives he has, he has Forge an Alliance to control four cultural planets. He doesn't have that. Mechanize the military, have one mech on each of four planets. I really wish I had that secret objective. It would be a free point. And unveil flagship, which is one of my favorite secret objectives to have. It's so easy to get, and it's an action phase one. You just have to win a combat with your flagship. Taking a look at the next agenda, standard forces, standard, wait, armed forces standardization. There you go, I did it. This resets your command tokens back to what you started with at the beginning of the game. Three in tactics, three in fleet, and two in strategy. I would actually lose tokens from this because I have three in each, but I can sell my votes, and I'd ideally want to sell them to someone that votes after me, which is Ghost or Titans. And Ghost would only gain, I think, one token from this. Looking at Titans, however, he would gain two in tactics, one in fleet, and then one in strategy for a total of four tokens. I think we have a potential buyer. I do keep quiet though, because the birdie boys vote for themselves. Red passes along with white. Now, I didn't want to start offering any deals to yellow until it came up to my turn, because I wanted the other players to be split, or at least not collectively vote for something or try to outbid me, because they did collectively have about 37 votes, which could have easily outdone me and yellow. When it comes to me, he offers me an alliance in order to do this trade and a ceasefire. I can't take his alliance, even though I'd kind of like to. They seem pretty nifty. So what I offer and ends up going through is a ceasefire along with a trade agreement. He can't give me both now because you're only allowed to trade one of your promissory notes per agenda phase or per voting. I can't remember which one it is. So one of them has to be a non-binding agreement for the future which I take his word on. Usually people will hold up their end of the bargain unless it's like the last round of the game or nearing the last round of the game. And I don't think we're quite there yet. Oh, nice. So he gets Drive the Agenda, which is a new agenda phase secret objective. I didn't even know there was agenda phase secret objectives. That's cool. So you just have to be the elected player or one of your planets has to be elected. If you're wondering why Hakan's picking first, it's because as part of the agreement for Speaker to go to Titans, it included Hakan getting first dibs on which card they want. So they just grab Diplomacy first. Titans pick up Imperial, playing catch up, I imagine, to some of the victory points. Leadership going to Argent Flight, or as I like to say, the Birdie Boys. And Imperial taking Trade, I'm really surprised technology actually makes it to me. If I pick that up and then combine it with the action card that I have to get another tech, that would be three tech in a round. And if I want War Sons, I'm going to have to play a little catch up on technology. I'm hoping that the Ghost will pick up Politics and then I can buy a Speaker off of them. But that doesn't happen. They get Construction instead. I assume to get more of a PDS network up online now that they have PDS2. Argent Flight quickly pop leadership. I think they're out of strategy tokens in order to follow up strategy cards. I initially think about just getting two tokens here, but considering diplomacy is on the board and I have so many good planets in terms of resources, following that up will get me a lot of my good planets back. So I might as well go all in and I switch up from the two tokens that I initially get up to five. Through all the hustle and bustle of leadership getting played, and then I'm about to do a trade with Hakan, I can't really figure out what he actually does on his turn. I don't know if it just slips his mind or what, but I don't actually catch the action that he does. Hakan is looking to purchase the trade agreement from Titans, and I'm fine with that. He's offering up trade convoys, which would let me treat everyone at the table as if they were neighbors to me, it's not really useful. There's no one that isn't actually neighbors with me right now except for Hakan, which it doesn't even matter for. What this card is useful for, however, is I can use it as a stall, as an action, to delay technology or a future strategy card in hopes that someone at the table will pay me to play it sooner. Ghost activate construction and they put a PDS on Malice along with Saculog, which has a wormhole token on it as well. 
if I'm doing my current math right, if he can get a wormhole on Hope's end, that's four PDS shots. No, five because of one in his home world, wherever his flagship goes. That's pretty crazy. I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to put a, hmm, yeah, I'm going to put a space dock on Lizix. The Imperium end up using trade and I have a token with them. I'm not sure how many people will play this on tabletop simulator that watch the videos, but usually that faction token means you owe them a trade good or you've promised them a trade good. I get three for being refreshed and normally you pay the person refreshing you one trade good. Then I pay one for the debt, so I really only get one trade good out of this deal. I'm not even really sure if it's worth it, but I don't want any animosity between us, so I go ahead and do it. I think I owe them the one trade good because I promised them one trade good not to vote on the earlier agenda that reset the command tokens because I thought I could swindle way more than one trade good out of Titans. And I was right. I did end up getting a ceasefire from him along with a trade agreement. So I think it was a good deal. I'm stalling out to see if someone will pay me to play technology earlier. I'm going to do Terraform, which is an action. And I'm going to put that on Zobot, making it a four resource planet. It also adds all three of the traits to it, but... With only one round, one objective left, I doubt I'm going to find that. I guess there's also secrets and maybe there's a stage two associated with it. I think there might be a stage two that says control six with the same trait or something like that. Titans activate Lodor, which means that ghosts could shoot the heck out of them, but they don't. Instead, they just grab the planet there and they end up grabbing a blue cultural relic in the process. I'm kind of curious how Hakan feels about this. I just realized I put Terraform on Zobot, which doesn't have a tech speciality. And I literally said to myself earlier, Biosims would be really great if you had a tech speciality on a planet and then stacked a bunch of awesome attachments to it. So, yeah. Pretty boys activate their home system and they build a destroyer and dreadnought. Please forgive me for the amount of inspections I'm doing of the various cards around the board. I did intentionally go into Prophecy of Kings with a decent degree of ignorance regarding what new content was added. I wanted some sincere wow factor as I saw things being explored and new abilities being used and that kind of stuff. So I'm really looking around at all of the abilities on the board going, oh, what does this do? What does that do? What's going on with this? Oh, I don't think that's going to be balanced. <laughs> Anyhow, um, Hakan here builds in their home system. They get a cruiser along with two fighters Casper enters in a nice blood pack with the Empyrean for their turn. The Empyrean go through the bee wormhole in order to grab another frontier token. I think them being the only faction going for those frontier tokens is just paying off immensely. They find enigmatic device, which is spend resources, six specifically, in order to research a technology. A little overpriced for a tech, but it's nice to be able to get more than one in a round. And it's an action, so it serves as a stall. By using my home system for five influence and Mechatol Rex for six, that's almost five tokens when I followed up leadership. Unfortunately, I am waiting for diplomacy to be used so that I can follow that up, spend one of those tokens to get back those two planets, and follow up plagiarize, which requires five influence. I'm going to go ahead and do trade convoys, which was given to me by Hakan, just to stall and wait for diplomacy to be played. Imperial gets played and in exchange for two trade goods, I use my agent to remove a command counter from the board, unlocking a system for Titans. Argent Dawn moving next door to Mechatol Rex, eventually just with one destroyer. As I look around the board, I'm not really concerned about losing Mechatol Rex. Between the PDS and the mech, I think there's just too much ground resistance for anyone to really have um, incentive to go there, but at the same time, there's not enough of 
a fleet there for people to be concerned that I'm going to take Imperial. The con trades two trade goods for the last red relic they need in order to get an artifact. And they use their action for the turn to go ahead and turn those three relics into an artifact. And, okay, let me get this straight. I get something that lets me reroll some dice and potentially destroy my units. And he gets a Death Star? The stellar converter card that he gets just blows up a planet and destroys all units on that planet with it. And it doesn't even have to be in a system he has ships in. It just has to be adjacent to something he has bombardment with. Ghost takes, well, he just takes everything and puts it into Malice. I, yeah, it, it just, just everything goes there. This does leave his home system a little defenseless. There's not much of a fleet there. There's a PDS and a couple of ground troops. And not, not that I'm planning to do this right now, but this does open it up an opportunity where I can go from the Gamma Wormhole Y into Malice, into B, into his home system, or I could go Gamma through his flagship, which is a wormhole, into his home system using In the Silence of Space. And if that objective comes up, that might be something that I do. The Imperium player plays the enigmatic device, paying six trade goods and getting themselves Gravity Rift. I don't have any good stalls in my hand except for Insubordination, but that would give me some ill will towards at least one of the players. Unfortunately, I can't, I have to wait. I need to wait for diplomacy, as I mentioned. I'd like to sell technology, but that's just kind of a nice to have. But most importantly, what I need is to have other players pass first because I want to have more planets than two of my neighbors. And if I pass before the other players, there's a good chance that Ghost is going to swoop in and grab a planet from me, which may compromise my ability to get that objective. Empyrean just got gravity drive so that means they could go in and grab one of my planets specifically i have the planet that's in the middle which has nothing on it and nothing in the air and looking really juicy so i'm just going to take one of my command tokens which i have a ton of and throw it on the other side of the galaxy to stall this way if i do lose one of my planets i can just go take it back titans activate arnor and lore moving up their flagship replacing a sleeper token with a PDS. And they also find a green relic fragment in the process. Oh, I suppose they move a couple of more little troops with them too, but nothing too noteworthy. Green also just activating a system and moving in a carrier and a fighter. Hakan activating a system, moving in a flagship and two fighters this time. Huh. At this point, I think people are just trying to do less obvious stalls than me because there's just plastic getting shuffled around, but I don't see clear like motivations for it. Ghost moving into his, uh, well, home, not home system. Empyrean using Sling Relay to drop down a Dreadnought. I was really hoping to delay construction until after I researched War Sign. That way, maybe I could get a War Sign this round, but I'm kind of getting tired of throwing away command tokens. I don't want to keep doing that and Eh, I might as well protect my home system. It's kind of important in this game. I eventually build a cruiser, a dreadnought, two fighters, and uh, two infantry. Sorry about the couple of flashes you see from my faction sheet as I'm double checking myself. The ghost player can really get anywhere on the board, but as you look around, all the places he has wormholes to go through, there's a nice fleet there, or there's some infantry defending the planet, stuff like that. He can, however, move through the Empyrean if the Empyrean allows him, which would allow him to take my middle planet without much resistance. And I've got a lot of my stuff locked down at this point. So prior to this move from Titans, I was a little concerned about that. I think now with Titans pushing in on Ghost, he has a kind of an, another um, problem to deal with other than going after me. So thank you, Titans. On the way in, he does get hit by quite a few PDSs. I think it's a total of like five, three of which hit. One of those 
is a miss due to anti-mass deflectors. Another one is canceled out due to Titan's agent that can prevent one hit. And the final hit is taken to a fighter. Argent Flight activating one of their space stocks to build a flagship along with two fighters. Yay! Diplomacy finally gets used. So I unexhaust, no, I unexhaust Snowbot. The four resources there will help me pay for technology. And I unexhaust my home world, which gives me five influence and lets me do the stealing of someone else's tech. Oh, I'm sorry. Borrowing. Replicating? Duplicating? Pirating. That's the word. The ghosts activate their home system and they build two dreadnoughts, a carrier, a mech, and two ground forces. I really like the combination here that's about to go down between Empyrean and Ghost. So the Empyrean purchase from the Ghost, their Creus IFF, which lets them put down a bee wormhole on one of the areas that have an exploration token. They then move a dreadnought through the bee wormhole into the spot that has the exploration token, finding themselves some merchant ships. And in the process of doing so, they can either replenish their commodities or convert their commodities to trade goods, which since they don't have any commodities, they obviously pick up the commodities. So they kind of pay one in order to get their, all their commodities replenished, which is pretty slick. Now that diplomacy has been played, I'm going to tap my homeworld in order to plagiarize one of my neighbor's AI algorithms. At first, I got a little concerned because I didn't think one of my neighbors had it, but Ghost just had it off to the side because he was building. Titans are ready to go with this. They almost immediately activate their home system to build, dropping down three cruisers and two mechs. Argent Flight out for the round. Hakan's trying to do an alliance swap with Empyrean, which will let them use each other's commander abilities. And he ends up accepting that. Hakan otherwise passes for the round. Ghost passes for the round as well, and Empyrean activate one of their systems in order to build a Dreadnought. Definitely some more pressure on Mechatol Rex, but surprisingly, everyone's leaving me alone there. All right, the time's come. I'm gonna do the double tech in order to get Psychoarchology, so I make the prerequisites without spinning the planets. And then I'm gonna pick up Warsun because I can skip the other red tech that I need using AI development algorithms. Titans and Imperium pass, which leaves it back to me. I forgot to use my biostems on one of my tech planets sooner. So I used it last round in order to Psychoarchology here and just pick up one trade good for that planet. I end up scoring half more planets than two of your neighbors. I have one more than Imperium and one more than Ghost. Looking at the other players, Ghost gets Spend 8 Influence, which is our first objective. Then Titans, Argent Flight, and the Imperian get have a flagship or war sun on the board. There's also two secret objectives that are scored this round. One is from Ghost, which is have another player's promissory note in front of you. And the other one by Titans is just purge two of your relics, <laughs> which I feel like is perfect for Titans because they get to kind of scour their planets for those relics over and over again. With almost every game that I play on Tabletop Simulator, it tends to end at the end of the first round of the stage two objectives. So in terms of pacing, I kind of wish I would have gotten at least one of my secrets by now because you can generally only get one of those per round. So I'm kind of regretting that. Then you look at the next objective, we get a mass wealth, which is spend three influence, three resources, and three trade goods. An expansion variation of the like spend eight influence that's a little more diversified, I suppose. So I really like diplomatic pressure as I'm taking a look at my new action cards. This forces a player to give you one of their promissory notes, and if they only have one left in their hand, that means you can force them to give you support for the throne. Otherwise, I get Sabotage, which is just always a nice card to see. But I think definitely uh, Diplomatic Pressure is the more fun one here. Since no one's done a support swap yet, there's a chance that I can snag a support from someone. But as I look around, everyone except for Titans have a decent number of Promissory Notes. So maybe I can swindle it out of Titans. Anyhow. Checks and balances come up, and this is an interesting one because if you vote for everyone 
basically chooses the strategy card for someone else at the table. If you vote against at the end of this agenda phase, you only read a three of your planets. Hakan ends up assassinating me, so I can't vote on this agenda. So I just flip over my little dial. It's actually really nice to be assassinated on this one because otherwise any planets you spend voting, you could only untap a couple of them. So it takes a little pressure off. The green player ends up voting against, what also known as Argent Flight, the Empyrean and Ghost both throw in a total of 16 votes for, leaving it up to Titans to figure this one out. And he does end up going in with the nine votes against and then breaking it against as Speaker, which means everyone's down some planets going into this next round because they can only unexhaust three of them. For the next agenda, we get regulated conscription, which means whenever you go to make infantry or fighters, you only get one infantry or fighter instead of two. As we spin around and see if anyone wants to play any wins or afters, Titans play space dock or construction rider, but it effectively gets you one space dock if it goes, in this case, against, which is no effect. I think the thing that demotivates me from voting for this law the most is that Every time it goes four, I always have to keep it in mind if I had, oh wait, the rules of the game have changed and I now have to do this thing different and it's just super tedious for me to do. So I'm not really sure strategically if one way is better or worse to me than the other. But by the time it gets to me, the decision's kind of made because there's 25 votes from Argent Flight, um, Hakan and Empyrean combined. So I would have to exhaust basically all of my planets for a chance at this going against. And with the only three of them being untapped at the end of the agenda phase, I'm for sure not doing that. So I guess I'm just going to have to keep this law in mind as we play. Imperial going to Titans and they can score both of the remaining stage one objectives, which would give them all five of the stage one objectives they need, bringing them up to seven points from all five stage one and then two secrets scored. I bring that up because it farther reemphasizes that I don't think they're actually going for Mechatol Rex. I also have their ceasefire. So getting there would be difficult unless they have an action card or something like that to help them out. Hakan picks up leadership. That leaves politics to the Birdie Boys and Empyrean end up picking up trade which is a good one to get due to the number of objectives we have related to spending stuff. I get Diplomacy. I generally wouldn't regard Diplomacy as a, as a good strategy card to pick, but as I look at the remaining objectives that I have, all of them, or at least a lot of them, have to do with resources, either resources to build my War Sun, the three, three trade goods, three influence and three resources for the stage two objective or the spend eight influence. And I have some really, really high quality planets between Mechatol Rex, my home system, or the one that I've improved that gives me four resources. So it's not a good strategy card, but in this situation, I think it's the best choice. Finally, that leaves Ghost and they pick up technology the con pops leadership very, very quickly, and I have a lot of planets that are really only good for influence, combined with being able to untap a lot through diplomacy and bio stems. Let me go ahead and get four of these bad boys. And I really like having tons of command counters because they allow you to have more turns than the other players, so you can wait for them all to pass and then you know pull something sneaky or just prevent them from pulling something sneaky. Do you guys remember that carrier that I put into the Nebula planet and was like, eh, I don't think I'm ever gonna get any use out of this carrier and it's just gonna sit there for the rest of the game? Well, I, I found a use for it. I talked to the Imperium player and actually I just tell the entire chat, I have the secret objective in order to score a ship or have a ship next to another player's home system. So I asked the Imperium if I can move in on Primor with that carrier. I really have no interest in taking anything from him or um, even getting that carrier back at some point. And perhaps this is a bit too trusting for me, but I do go ahead and move that carrier into Primor. 
Argent Flight moving in with a cruiser, two destroyers, and two ground forces. The initial PDS fire takes out one of the, well, the cruiser moving in. I do like some of the pressure being applied onto Titans because they are currently in the lead victory points wise, followed up by Ghost. The anti-fighter barrage easily takes out that one remaining fighter. And when it comes down to the cruiser versus two destroyers, the cruiser gets a whiff and the two destroyers gets a hit on that cruiser, finishing the space combat. He goes to land the two infantry onto the planet and one of my favorite action cards gets played, Parlay, immediately returning them to the space area. Trade gets played, and because I have so many command counters, I think I only have one more in the bag, I'm really tempted to just pay to have my commodities refreshed for free, but then I'd have to find someone to exchange my commodities for trade goods anyhow, so I'll go ahead and take up the offer of paying the Imperian one to both refresh my commodities for free and get me a couple trade goods. That leaves me with a healthy six trade goods. Technology gets popped and I already knew that direct hit didn't work on mechs. What I didn't realize is Duranium Armor works with mechs. So if I get three mechs on Mechatol Rex, even if you come in there with a war sun and bombard and hit three times, you're probably not going to take out three mechs. That's ridiculous. So I'm just, I'm nerding out so hard right now on the idea of having a three mech combat with geranium armor. I want it to happen so bad. Titans move into the bee wormhole initiating combat with the Empyrean. All their ships do, however, get blown up through PDS fire. Graviton laser systems are used, so all the hits have to go directly to that carrier, which takes everything out. Now, the interesting thing is that the Imperian's faction technology says, if you attack me or activate a system that I have units in, you have to give me one of your promissory notes, which is a really interesting faction ability. That means that if I'm doing my, my cards correctly, the only promissory note left that Titans have is um, support the throne, because if they would have given support to Imperian, they would have to immediately play it face up. So I'm definitely eyeballing stealing support for the throne from Titans. Titans also score their last objective, which is turn their fleets to dust, destroy the last remaining ship of a player using PDS fire, Ghosts also jump in on this with some PDS fire, hit it, getting one hit and taking out one of the cruisers. I am trying to convince Ghosts to go after Titans because the system adjacent to their homeworld is open with ships, so he could use his faction ability to put a wormhole there and take the home system of Titans pretty easily. Hakan just doing Hakan things, just dropping tons of trade goods to build two Dreadnoughts, and a fighter in their home system. Insubordination is the only stall card that I have, and I need to use it because I'm at my maximum action card limit. I go ahead and give y'all the offer of, I'm going to play Insubordination, and I can either play it against you, or you can tell me who to play it against. The idea here is that then maybe Titans become the bad guy that no one likes, as opposed to me. But to my surprise, Ghost pays me two trade goods to play it against Titans, which is a uh, welcome outcome. Uh, Titans end up sabotaging it, though, which makes sense because leadership's been played and they only have one tactic token left. So it would be really detrimental for them to lose that. I'm sure they have something they want to do or I should say need to do with that. I sell my agent's ability to the Birdie Boys. For popping politics, they remove a command counter from the board and I get two trade goods. I think between their starting technologies and their agent's ability, you can kind of redeem them a little bit as a non-warfare oriented faction. So there, there's hope in them. I do draw into two cards that aren't particularly great. One of them just negates PDS fire, and the other one allows me to get five votes after everything's been said and done for the agenda phase, which can still be useful. I think the weakest link is Maneuvering Jets, which just, you know, contrary to the other card, Maneuvering Jets would just negate one hit from PDS. 
So if I have to discard one, I think that's the weakest link for sure. The Imperium use Sling Relay to build a Dreadnought in their home system. They go ahead and in turn while they ponder on this just to keep the game moving. Uh-oh, Ghost moving in on Imperium's turf with those Frontier tokens. He does grab one of the Frontier tokens and gets a wild card relic. It basically just can be treated as any one of the relic types. Titans activating one of their systems, replacing the sleeper token with a PDS. And in the process, they also take this opportunity to create three cruisers and I believe three fighters, giving themselves a pretty beefy fleet in that area. They also draw into functioning base, which they use to replenish their commodities. Hakan uses production biomes, giving two to Empyrean just in exchange for Empyrean giving one right back, netting them five trade goods. I'm in a tough spot because if I wait any longer to support swap, I'm worried that no one will support swap with me because I'm too close to winning. I don't, however, want yellow support for the throne because I want to steal it, honestly through the card that will let me take someone's promissory note and it's the only promissory note he has left. So I go ahead and support swap with purple. He is in second place. So this is a bit dangerous. I'm hoping the table will kind of gang up a little bit against yellow and purple for me. And unfortunately this does what I didn't want to do, which is trigger the entire table to support swap or start support swapping. I really want Yellow to hold on to his support for the throne so I can take it. I'm gonna go ahead and move into Mechatol Rex. This is mostly a stall, but also having two more infantry on Mechatol Rex will really help me hold that planet next round if it comes down to me getting Imperial for the win. I go ahead and play Solar Flare here because I might as well. I keep coming up against that seven card limit and there's a lot of PDSs on the board. So I might as well save myself some damage here. Party Boy is coming in for round two on Lodor due to the previous turn's parlay. Unfortunately, he does get a PDS hit against him, so he has to take out one of his destroyers. Thankfully, it looks like he has three there, so he's not exceeding his capacity. I think I previously said he came in with two, so sorry about that. And he lands with his two ground units, and <laughs> infantry combat's so finicky because they have to roll so high. The first round is a zero hits on both sides. And then they have to go to another round. And even on two versus one, like it's so... You can really lose a two versus one combat pretty easily. But the birdie boys do pull it out and finish off the last infantry there, taking the planet. The Imperium is just moving into a blank system space giving themselves a nice little buffer between their home system and green. Ghosts activate a system and they're destroying one of their mechs there in order to get a bee wormhole placed in the system. This allows them to move in and then between assault cannons and the dimensional slicer, they just instantly kill off that carrier. They really wanted that planet back. Imperial gets used, and this is one of those that I think you should almost always secondary, unless you're just sitting on some really great secret objectives. So I, of course, secondary this one, and I get Occupy the Fringe, which is have nine ground forces on a planet that doesn't have a space dock. And I, it could be worse. I could move a bunch of infantry into Megatol and maybe achieve this. Hakan activating the original trio. I think he just moves a Dreadnought into that system. I activate the center system that I have with a space dock and a mech. The reason being is I, I want to build there, but also I'm going to go ahead and move my Dreadnoughts in. They are very slow. Having them in that system means there's a lot more options for them to bounce around and defend any system I need to take back or to go on the offensive, they're kind of concentrated so I can move them a little easier. And I could even upgrade into like Dread 2 or get Gravity Drive or Flank Speed to help out. There's just a lot more tactical options for them being there than being where they were. Now granted, it kind of puts them out of the picture for this round, but hey. For the build itself, I go ahead and pass while I do the calculations. Um, I do end up with a War Sun and two infantry. 
Man, I always underestimate how expensive Warsons are. Even using AI algorithms to reduce the price of everything here, it is just insanely expensive. Green and white do a support for the throne swap, which leaves only yellow and red with their supports left. I think it's going to force them to exchange supports, which is unfortunate because I was hoping to seal the last promissory note of yellow and get support for the throne from him. Uh, oh well. Green also activates one of their systems and builds two dreadnoughts. Oh, cool. Imperium used their hero, which is pretty nifty. It allows them to put down a frontier token anywhere that doesn't already have a frontier token and is basically a system that doesn't contain any planets. If they have ships there, they get to immediately explore that token. So they net themselves four frontier tokens. Then they draw into Derelict Ship, which allows them to draw a secret objective. Ion Storm, which is a A wormhole. And whenever you use that A wormhole, it turns into a B wormhole. And if you use it again, it goes back into an A wormhole. They also collect themselves two wildcard relics, which is pretty awesome. It goes to activate their home system in order to build, but kind of pass their turn as a courtesy. Uh, not pass for the round, just their turn. And they end up eventually building a Dreadnought, a Mech, two Destroyers, and an Infantry. Titans do go through with the support swap with Hakan. They're kind of forced to at this point. I don't blame them. I'm just upset because I wanted to steal their last promissory note. They also play an action card called Seize Artifact, which does what it advertises. It steals one of, well, I guess it doesn't, it kind of is false advertising. It really only steals a relic fragment, and they steal a relic fragment from Ghost. They do get one of the wild card ones, though. Pecan activates the neighboring asteroid field and moves in a carrier along with four infantry. I'm going to go ahead and use Diplomacy on Zobot. Reason being, I only have one infantry there, and... Um, it's looking a little vulnerable, especially since most of my fleet is locked down right now. I'm going to go ahead and untap Zobot. That way I can build some more stuff this round. Combine that with untapping Mechatol Rex, and I should be able to achieve an objective at the end of the round as well. Specifically, spend 8 influence. The green player goes ahead and passes, leaving it up to the Empyrean to go. They activate one of their systems, but they go ahead and end their turn just to keep things moving. They use War Machine and ultimately end up building a carrier along with a Dreadnought. Ghost, Titans, and Hakan all pass, bringing it back to me. I'm going to go ahead and use Zobot to just build a ton of infantry at home. This is, this is mostly in case I need to get that secret objective of having 9 infantry on a planet without a space dock. But it also serves as a good defense system back home since I don't have much of a fleet there. Oh no, the poor Imperium player is still building from last round. In his defense, the turns did go by really, really quickly, so it makes sense. He does activate his home system also to build there, ultimately putting out a Dreadnought. In doing so, I let him know that I'm going to pass, and as it comes back to him... He plays Prove Your Endurance, which is kind of a nifty secret objective. It's be last to pass in a round. I'm going to score Sway the Council along with Titans. We are both spending 8 influence. For my secret objective, I'm going to score Have a Ship next to a player's home system. Argent Flight is having a pretty good round. They are picking up Have More Planets Than Two of Your Neighbors. They are also getting a secret objective of Foster Cohesion, which is be neighbors with everyone at the board. Titans having scored it during the round, and now Ghost, Akana, and Pyrian scoring it, it being a mass wealth, spend three resources, three influence, and three trade goods. This leaves Titans in a pretty dangerous position at nine points, but they have scored all of their secret objectives along with all of the public objectives for stage one. Hakan is at four points, and everyone else ends up sitting comfortably at six together. For our first stage two objective, we have centralized galactic trade, spend 10 trade goods. For my two action cards that I draw into, I get exploration probe, which allows me to explore an adjacent frontier token without having the corresponding tech. I just need to have a ship next door. And flank speed, which gives all of my ships plus one movement during one tactical action. 
I am one card over my limit, so I have to discard something. And oh, this is a tough choice, but I think Flake Speed has to go because I already have Cruisers 2 rolling around, which should give me enough movement. Taking a look at the first agenda phase, we get Seed of an Empire. You can either vote for, which would give a victory point to the person in the lead, or you can vote against to give a victory point to the person who has the lowest. I'm not really sure who to play Diplomatic Pressure against. Um, I want to go ahead and play it because I'm going to keep having to discard cards if I don't. The only person with one card left is Yellow with the Trade Agreement. Oh well, I waited too long. Diplomatic Pressure got played against me. And I can't give my Alliance away because I don't effectively have one. It's supposed to be off to the side. I don't want to give away my Ceasefire. I don't want to give away my Political Secret. That leaves my Scepter of Dominion, which if I actually end up winning some combats could be played in a way that doesn't hurt me directly. It's kind of like a diplomacy or a watered down version of diplomacy. So let me go with that. In the meantime, I'm going to play diplomatic pressure against yellow. It's only a two value trade agreement, which kind of stinks, but I guarantee know that I'm going to get something that I can use. Hopefully. It would be quite unfortunate if trade didn't get picked up, but with the stage to objective being trade goods oriented, I doubt that will happen. And apparently this is the round for diplomatic pressure to be played because purple plays their diplomatic pressure against white, who gives them their trade agreement, which is definitely a better trade agreement than the one that I got. That one's worth four. This is one of those cards where it's really obvious that it has to go in one direction because if it goes four, Titans would just win. So no one wants that. Well, Titans do. So it's kind of telling that no one played any riders. It means no one probably has any riders. So Argent Flight starts it off pretty strong with a decent number of votes against. And then some of the other players follow suit, ending in a total of 20, which Titans, I assume doesn't have a way of outvoting 20. So it ends up going against and Hakan catches up to us a little bit at five points. Next up, we have Prophecy of Ixth, which is, I think a little underrated. Having plus one to all your fighters, especially if you have a decent sized fighter swarm is really significant. And the downfall of it going away if you don't produce two fighters is really easy to play around. And worst case scenario, you just lose the card. Oops, I guess I lied to myself. So Hakan ends up playing a technology rider on green, effectively meaning green's not gonna win this. <laughs> As for the vote itself, the Argent Flight vote for themselves. Empyrean end up voting for Ghost. And if you haven't noticed, I haven't been using predictive intelligence because I think if I vote with that extra three and I'm wrong, I can't use it during the round. And I think the during the round ability of being able to redistribute your tokens is just so strong that I don't want to lose that. And I'm horrible at guessing agenda phases. Anyhow, so I vote for myself with the 22, uh, I, I guess, influence that I have. Ghost votes for himself, making it so that Titans could break this, but he ends up just abstaining effectively, which makes it go to me. Imperial is first to be taken by the Birdie Boys, and they're only four points away with a secret objective unscored, two unscored stage one objectives, and then of course the stage two objective. Trade two is picked up by the Imperian, and that has to be carefully played because that could easily give Titans or the Argent Flight the victory. I pick up politics. I don't see how I can get four points this round. If I get optimistically the stage two objective and one secret objective in my hand that would still only put me at nine so my thinking with politics is i'll get speaker and then hopefully neither titans or argent flight will win it this round and then i can pick first next round getting the win i suppose i could get really lucky and either draw a secret objective through the secondary of imperial or through an action card and get something that can be played during the action phase or agenda phase since those exist now ghost grab tech warfare goes to titans and hakan gets construction this leaves me kind of optimistic because there's no leadership which means everyone's lacking in tokens except me i actually have a ton of them and the ability to redistribute them mid-round is really useful this also gives me the ability to score first which is nice but i don't think i'm going to get the four points needed 
I'm gonna go ahead and play Exploration Probe. This is gonna allow me to explore the Frontier token on the asteroid belt neighboring one of my ships. This is mostly because eventually I'm gonna play politics and I don't wanna exceed my hand size and then just waste a bunch of cards. But I do end up finding Mirage, which actually seems really lucky. This will allow me to seize an icon in a way that doesn't cause any tension with another player. And uh, unfortunately, the only problem is I don't have anti-mass deflectors to actually move into the asteroid field. We can activate their home system and build a carrier along with three mechs. I assume they're going for mechanize the infantry, which is have one mech on four different worlds that you control. They also use their, I think it's called agent, in order to get two commodities. They also use their hero, which allows them to do one production for free, which is amazing. Trade gets played and the table kind of agrees to just trade embargo Argent Flight so he can't get the stage two objective. I use my own commodities get refreshed along with yellows. I have to pay the Empyrean one in order to do so. Netting myself four trade goods bring me up to eight. I can then use Psychoarchology to get one trade good for each tech planet or tech specialized planet that I exhaust. That would put me at eight. Plus, if I can score my secret objective, I would have nine. Titans play Archaeological Expedition, and that allows them to reveal the top three of the industrial deck. If they get a relic, they get to keep it and subsequently turn it into an artifact. Someone at the table tells me that there is an artifact which will give you a victory point. So he has a chance at winning right here. And I do debate sabotaging it, but eh, I think the odds are, odds are pretty low. So I, I let it go through and he doesn't even end up drawing into a relic. So, whew. Tech gets played and I do at least briefly consider how I would go about getting nine infantry on one planet. I do have the War Sun and the Dreadnoughts there, which could pop into my home system and then pop back to drop those off on another planet somewhere. But I prefer not to lock those down until really late. And it just seems so much easier to just grab anti-mass deflectors and grab Mirage than to, to try to go for the nine infantry on one planet. Plus, the only person who can really contest me in Mirage is Ghost. And I can easily outstall him. Even if he goes there first, I have a war sun. I, I can probably take it back from him, worst case scenario. Imperial gets played and Argent Flight ends up exchanging their commodities for trade goods, I believe with Hakan. In doing so, that gives them the 10 trade goods to meet the stage two objective, putting them at eight points. And then they just need a secret during the action phase or status phase, along with another stage one objective, which they definitely are able to get one of those for the win. I'm less inclined to think the Titans have it at this point because they don't have any secret objectives and there literally is no stage one objectives for them to score and they have very few trade goods. I get incredibly lucky on the secondary of Imperial and draw into Brave the Void, which is just win a combat in an anomaly. Combine that with In the Silence of Space so that I can move through enemy ships and I definitely think I can score that one which, if I can, would get me the four points I need to win. I convinced the Ghost players to use the Creus IFF, or rather let me use the Creus IFF to put in a wormhole on Mechatol Rex. That way I can go directly from Mechatol Rex into the black hole and just pop that destroyer. I want to wait to do that until as late as possible, that way people don't know I'm gonna win and potentially stop me somehow. Let me go ahead and play politics. Some of the action cards I draw may change my game plan up. I give myself speaker. And for the two agendas, the one that's really important is public execution. I'm definitely going to put that on the bottom. That will forfeit the speaker from whomever is elected. They also lose all their action cards and they can no longer vote for the rest of the agenda phase. That's, that's not one that I want. The other one is committee formation, where you whoever wins that one, if there's an elected player agenda afterwards, they just play that law and say, I'm the elected player, I get this. That was not a big deal. I put that one back on top. 
For my action cards, I get Bunker and Morale Boost. Morale Boost may be a little helpful in a combat. I'm sure to have at least one this round. The Hakan player activates the Rigel Trio, moving in a carrier and placing one mech on each planet, working towards their objective of having four mechs on four different planets. This is a really nifty edge case. If you have a Frontier token on a Supernova, you can use the Creus IFF, which Empyrean gets from Ghost, to play Ghost Ship on the Supernova, and then in the future, you can use a tactical action there to explore it. Titans activate Arnold Lore, finding abandoned warehouses, which allows them to gain two commodities or convert two of their commodities into trade goods. Still not enough for them to score the stage to objective. The table is collectively kind of noticing, well, the Gene Sorcerers have Speaker, they can just get Imperial, and if he's still on Mechatol Rex, he can win. So I'm like, no, 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 guys, that's not my plan. I can move off Mechatol Rex. It's fine. I'll move off of it. There's nothing to be worried about. Nothing to see here. Move along. Uh-oh. I think I've activated Ghost Trap card. They're using their wormhole generator to move the Gamma or Y wormhole next to the home system of Argent Dawn. And they're going to swap Mechatol Rex for the system that's next to Argent Dawn using their hero. I think I'm okay with this because I have no intention of actually taking their home system. And the impression that I get from Argent Flight is that they don't intend to attack me either. They do, however, activate their home system and build four fighters there, which is valid. I think between that and the fleet they have existing, my three cruisers aren't going to be able to take that even if they wanted to. You can also include a couple of PDS shots in there. I'm not exactly sure how many, but there's enough to keep me out at least. I've already played Psychoarchology in order to get the two remaining trade goods that I need. I asked the Akan player if he has any stall action cards, and he gives me Spy. I'm like, I don't really know what I can give you in exchange, but here's some action cards. And out of those, he picks up Distinguished Counselor, which I guess is a good card if we're going to get another agenda phase. I use Spy against the Argent Flight, and I end up picking up Salvage, which isn't great, but... I really just wanted to stall anyhow, so. Pecan plays production biomes, and Titans are the recipient of the other two trade goods, giving one of them back to Hakan. He's nowhere close to the 10 that he needs for the objective, however. <laughs> so the Empyrean go to activate the supernova and get their exploration in, but in doing so, the Titan player just blasts them right out of the sky. So they would have found a derelict vessel, which gives them a secret objective, but because they were destroyed by a PDS fire, they don't get to explore anymore. Warfare gets used to remove the token locking down Titan's main fleet. And I secondary this. Unfortunately, I am exactly one resource shy of being able to build a, another War Sun. So instead, I just get two cruisers, two fighters, and one infantry. I'm sitting here scratching my head like, how does everyone else have their hero unlocked? They don't have all their secret objectives completed. And then I realized that it's not secret objectives you need to complete in order to unlock them. You just need to complete three objectives. Uh, anyhow, Megatol Rex gets relocated. Uh, this is way more important than what I just said. Megatol Rex gets relocated right next to Argent Flight's home system by Ghost. Argent Flight go to activate Megatol Rex. And in doing so, I'm like, hold up, hold up, wait a second. Um, because I need those units in order to destroy something in an anomaly. I offer up a ceasefire swap if that's something that he's concerned about. But I think he really just wants me off of Megatol Rex. So I offer to just move off of Megatol Rex before the end of the round. And he kind of backs down from that. Eventually passing for the round instead of attacking me. I still don't quite want people to know that I'm going to win at the end of the round because there's a possibility I lose my home system or I can't keep Mirage, something like that. I'm kind of waiting for everyone to pass. So I just take one of my tokens and throw it on the other side of the board. I don't catch it at the time, but this does technically break support for the throne. It works itself out eventually. No, Hakan, no! He activates Mechatol Rex and he's just trying to get Unveil flagship here. You can see his secret objectives due to a much earlier agenda card that gets played. So he's just trying to come in here, win a space combat, and get a point. And 
I actually really appreciate this from him. Even though he's in last place, he was still trying to do his best to get points. And a lot of times what I see is that when people are really far behind, they're like, well, I'm not going to win, so it doesn't matter. So I, I have a lot of respect for him due to this. Coming in is his flagship, a carrier, a destroyer, and three fighters. On the way in, he does take two PDS hits, one from myself and one from Green, which kills off two of his fighters. But the odds are definitely not in my favor. I get extremely lucky on my rolls. I get three hits to his one hit. He does use his special ability of his flagship to turn one of those other uh, misses into a hit by spinning some trade goods. So that's a cumulative two hits. I play shields holding to negate those two. And then at the end of this round, that is my three cruisers against his one flagship. And I'm feeling way, way better about this now. My luck holds up pretty well. I get one hit and he gets one hit. So he uses sustained damage on his flagship and I just ditch a cruiser. Going into the third round, we each get one hit. And there is a shields holding sold to him by Ghost for two trade goods. And he uses that, but I in turn use my sabotage in order to get rid of that. I really want that one cruiser remaining. The Empyrean use Sling Relay to put one carrier in their home system, and they also transition some of their ground forces into tokens. The Titans activate Arnor Lore, doing some additional exploration, fishing for trade goods, I presume. They find local fabricators, which does get them a commodity. They also deploy two infantry into the space area of that system. Ghost plays Reactor Meltdown on me, destroying my space dock that's outside my home system which is unfortunate. However, after winning the combat against Takan, I did manage to get one fleet token from winning a combat. If I get a second one, I can unlock my commander. I think what I'm going to do is initiate a combat in an anomaly and then try to play innocent when I play the card that lets me move through other people's ships, hoping that no one else sabotages it or resists it too much. And it's time to throw another token on the other side of the galaxy just so I can stall out more and no, no other players can stop me. Construction gets played and it's kind of a use it or lose it moment for my agent. If I don't use him in order to get the free secondary now, there's no other strategy cards out there to use him for. So I just remove one of the command tokens from Hakan, which I don't think will threaten me to get a PDS on my home system. Between the PDS and the 8 infantry, no, sorry, 9 infantry there, I don't think I'm going to lose my home system. The secondary of construction normally locks down the system you put your token in, but because my agent uses another player's token, it actually locks it down from the other player whose token I use. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyhow. Titans and Empyrean both pass, and Ghost moves in to take some of my systems, but eh, it's fine. I don't need them. He does score Make an Example of Their Worlds, which is bombard and destroy the last of a, another player's ground forces on a planet. But it should be fine, because as long as I can get my secrets together, I should be able to score first. I'm going to go ahead and throw another tactics token out there just so I can end my turn. And I'm also going to use predictive intelligence to move all of my strategy tokens into my tactics pool. Since all of these strategy cards have been played, there's no use to have them there. Ghost passes, which leaves just me as the active player, which means it's time to destroy something in an anomaly. I decide to go after the destroyer here playing my In the Silence of Space in order to move through other player ships, which should be able to get me two cruisers and a carrier there, which is pretty good odds against a destroyer. In hindsight, I really should have just went for that carrier in the asteroid field because this area is surrounded by PDS fire. I have to pay Argent Flight my ceasefire in order to not shoot me. Then I have to pay ghost my trade agreement not to shoot me and at this point i think the players just assume i'm gonna win somehow and white's just messing with me and ask for my uh yellows ceasefire that i have <laughs> not to shoot me even though i'm not i don't even think he has pds that can shoot me for the combat itself i roll and get two hits and he gets zero in return so 
The combat itself was quick and easy. After the combat, I grab my fleet token from the Empyrean and I score Brave the Void, putting me up to seven points. And finally, back to me, I'm going to activate the Asteroid Belt, which contains Mirage, move my War Sun, some Dreadnought, some Ground Infantry in there, taking that so that I can score Seize the Icon at the end of the round. The Ghost Player does shoot me with some PDS and ends up getting two hits, which I take on the two Dreadnoughts through sustained damage. I don't see any reason to do anything else in the round, so I go ahead and pass. At the end of the round, I am first to score, so I score Seize the Icon, control a legendary planet, along with spin 10 trade goods, getting me to 10 points and winning the game. Argent Flight actually would have won that had I not. He had a secret and a stage one objective. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment below. I put a lot of time into making especially these TI4 playthroughs. Oh my gosh, so much time editing. So I really appreciate you watching this and I hope you have a good day. Bye.